ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد dear viewers dear beloved brothers and sisters assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh all praise due to allah with his blessings i am inshallah going to today talk about some of the etiquettes of a believer akhlaqul mu'minin we know that we as believers in allah we also have to observe the best of the etiquettes we have to set examples as a person of excellent manners our beloved muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam kana khuluquhu alquran his etiquettes were all based on the quran so let us go and see what he sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us which we have to equip ourselves with there are so many things hundreds of things i can talk about i will try to only give few and i hope hopefully i hope and i pray that we benefit from it and we try to observe observe it in our life now brothers there are so many things and sisters we can talk about unfortunately people have abused the rights which islam has given us in many ways but if we know that we are able to follow the true essence and the teachings of islam and we follow it you we do know that we can follow it let us try to follow it and you will find that you can be a better servant of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now let me give few examples such as when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said ibtisamika fi wajhi akhika sadaqa just to have a simple smile on your face for your brother or sister you get rewards then what about salam awala adullukum ala shay iza fa'altum tahabbtum afshi salama bainakum should not i tell you of something which you if you do you are going to be rewarded and you will love each other say lots of salams when you meet a brother you say assalamu alaikum brother have a nice manners subhanallah sometimes we give salam to some brothers once they answer you feel like i wish i had never said salam to him why because the way he answered as if it is going to cost him or her money to answer your salam subhanallah you know so much etiquettes has been given emphasis on i will tell you a hadith a story about a man and a woman a woman enters hellfire and the man enters the jannah from what did they do jihad did they pray whole night and day did they fast all the months did they give out millions of dollars in the path of allah did they make a big masjid where there is great scholars of their time nothing of the kind or was this woman you know committing all the forms of debauchery or was she a fornicator zania or something else let us see there was this woman dakhalat al mar'atu an nar fi hirratin habasatha rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam a woman she entered the hell fire due to a cat how come she chained the cat or locked her up or roped it and then did not provide her with food and drink neither did she provide her a way through which she could go outside and eat by herself and it died allah punished that woman due to that and she ended up dwelling in the hell fire for a cat yes this is how much islam gives as a rights even to animals and the kind of importance is given to the character etiquette of a person another man he went to drink and the weather was very hot when he came out of the well he saw this dog 
you know, basically panting and huffing and puffing and very, very thirsty wants water. When he saw that the way the dog was suffering, Wallahi, by Allah, we know that the dog is najis. We know that the dog is impure. And we know the cleaning process we have to take in order to clean ourselves from dogs. And yet this man goes down the well, take out his leather socks, fills it with water, comes up climbing one, holding it in his teeth, gives it to the dog to drink. He enters the channel. He enters the paradise. Allah accepted his deed so much that Allah made it easy for him to enter the paradise. You see, akhlaq, the etiquettes, the importance of it. This is in regards of an animal, a cat and a dog. So what about when it deals with us brothers and sisters? There are so many brothers and sisters, they suffer all over the world. And yet the least, which is to raise our hands and say, Oh Allah, make it easy on them. Give them endurance, provide them with patience, give them sabr. We don't do it. Why? Do we have the feeling for them or not? We know that al mu'min lil mu'min kal bunyani yashuddu ba'dhuhu ba'da iza ishtaka minhu 'udhu tada'a lahu sa'iru al jasad bi sahri wal humar. One mu'min for another mu'min is like the pillars of the building. If one pillar falls down the rest of the building will and our body is like that if one complains, the rest of the body is not restful. So if millions and millions of brothers and sisters, Muslim brothers and sisters, they suffer all over the world, all over the world, how come you sleep so nicely? How come you are enjoying your life? How come you don't feel? Even at the time when it is mentioned to you. Our akhlaq, our etiquettes. You know, let us talk about two women. In the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, two sahabiyah. One woman, she was nice and kind to her neighbors. She used to pray, she used to fast, she used to give out charity, but not in exaggeration, not too much, a little bit. But she was very well mannered to her neighbors. Another one, she was an excellent person in fasting and praying and giving out charity. غَيْرُ أَنَّهَا تُؤْذِي جِيرَانِهَا But she wasn't kind to her neighbor. You know what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said? He said about the one who wasn't kind to her neighbor that she's going to hellfire. And the one who was good to her neighbor she is going to Jannah, paradise. The, so much of importance has been given to our manners. You know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنْ جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ فَزَوِّجُهُ When he said, a man or a woman comes with a proposal to your daughter or son for marriage, and you accept the deen, the, the religion of that person, and akhlaq, etiquette. Because some people can pray five times a day, but when you see the akhlaq, the way they behave with others, man, it's zero, below zero. Why did Rasulullah give so much of importance with the deen al-akhlaq? Naturally, there is a reason for that because it shows the importance of the akhlaq. The way we should equip ourselves with etiquettes when we behave with others. You see that there were two brothers from Badu Israel. One who was very religious and the other he wasn't. So each time this person will give him nasiha, adequate, uh, uh, equip him with lots of admonition. Come and pray brother, you know the masjid is near and everything. One day this guy got very tired and said, look man, you are not responsible over me. You go and pray and forget about me. So he got angry and said, by Allah you are never going to go to Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he took the Hukum of Allah, the verdict of Allah in his hand, Allah punished him by taking him to the hellfire. And Allah forgave him because he was humble to Allah. Though he was sinful, but he did not take the command of Allah in his, in his hands and he ended up in the Jannah. Akhlaq, brothers, the manners. 
You know that every Monday and Thursday when our deeds are presented, it's presented twice a day on, on Fajr and Asr and also a special presentation on Monday and Thursday. The Hadith says, فَيُغْفَرُوا لِكُلِّ مُؤْمِنْ وَمُؤْمِنَا Every mu'min, every believer in Allah, our sins are forgiven. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, what an amazing hadith. Illa al mushahin In the exception of those who are, have got, ended up in fighting among themselves, and they are not in cordial terms, they are not in talking terms. Though they are not mushrikeen, al mushrikeen, their sins are not forgiven. Politicians, they are not forgiven. Non-believers, their sins are not forgiven. All the mu'minin, they are forgiven. Apart from these two who are not in talking terms and they have not tried. If it is for non-Islamic reasons. Allah says, Akhira. Delay their forgiveness, hatta yastaliha, till they come back to a normal relationship. You see our etiquettes, brothers? That our sins are not forgiven. Many may end up in hellfire and, and so many other things. We pray it may be of no good to us if our akhlaq is not good. So let us equip ourselves with akhlaq. A smile for our brothers and sisters. Nice words on our tongue. Don't be harsh and tough on your family, on your children, on your wife. Teach them the right thing. But don't be a dictator. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aisha says that he never hit any woman. Subhanallah. Or any children. Let us be like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I pray to Allah that we have the best of the manners. We are nice and kind and soft and best in our approach. Because this is going to win your hearts, which your harsh terms will not. And I pray to Allah that it becomes the reason for us to enter the paradise ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته